All right, we are back and live. Uh, don't know what was up with that technical difficulty. Um, everything is, is working now. I can confirm. I can see the audio waves going forth. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're back. We took a three-week break. Um, I personally had some burnout issues went out, but we are back. And uh, I'm lot Disneyland. <laughs> yes. A, a lot has happened. There have been there has been a Disney trip. There has been uh, another trip of some variety that I will not disclose. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a duo dual cast. I, I don't know the terminology. So you've you've got your captain here. You've got your what what's co captain, no. lieutenant, major, general, commander, shepherd, uh, Sarah over here. I'm Commander Shepard. This is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. <laughs> I'm going to say that for every podcast I'm on so I can get that discount. I'm there sorry. You go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, like, hey, I love everyone on this show. I, I, I would like to say I love everyone on this show equally, but there's some people I love more equally. I, 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 I have not done a tally of the of of each instance that everyone's been on the show, but so out of like the thirty five, you you look you've like by far been the most uh frequent frequent person on. I guess aside for if, if I wasn't on the show, like the it would not be live. I'd I'd have to like hand off the streaming key or or whatever. Like I try, I do my, I I I do my best. Obviously, I have my like burnout days too, but I do I do my absolute best. We we appreciate you. I appreciate you. The, the world at large. Uh, the, I, mean, the, I know that's a lie, but it's okay. <laughs> the the uh, cam the camera the stream is seeing can't see it, but my well, my big boy cat over there appreciates you. Thanks. <laughs> but um oh yeah, I forgot to do the rigmarole because I've not done this in like three weeks, but that's okay. Uh, Game Session Podcast is filmed here live on Mondays at 5 p.m. PST. Uh, used to be Sundays. Uh, you can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. I want to give a shout out to my patrons, uh, Ramen Nomad, uh, Bo, and Force Big Boss. Thank you very much. Um, I guess just just slightly talk about burnout stuff and just scheduling. Uh, podcast is still going to be back. I might be taking another day or two after the podcast airs to actually put the stuff up because I had myself on this, like a super strict production schedule where I would like record the podcast and do all the post-production like immediately afterwards, hurry to bed so I can get up to work at three in the morning. It, it, it sucked. It sucked really bad. So I'm just going to be a little bit more relaxed about the way I approach things. Um, game streams will be coming back. Basically, when I feel like it, I, I don't feel like doing a regimented schedule for that. It'll basically be like, hey, I just feel like streaming something today. I'm, I'll post to Twitter and then we'll do it. But that's about that. Uh, do you, do you want to advertise anything you've been up to, Sarah? I mean, uh, not really. I was just uh, I was just uh, I just taped a show with the uh, video game robot guys. They were absolutely lovely. I had a great time. Uh, that should be going live sometime next week. Uh, I'm still doing my freelance work, but I am working on a Evangelion piece right now. That's taking a lot more out of me than I thought it would, just like the show did. <laughs> but I, I am trying to get that done so it can be edited and hopefully released by next week. So hopefully. <laughs> Didn't you have a um, a Suicide Squad piece that went up in the last I couple did. weeks? Uh, that was right before the movie came out. It actually came out like I think one of the days I was in Disneyland. It, it came out. Um, I that was just like a comprehensive. I hadn't seen the movie at the time. Like discussion of every character, like where they first appeared in that kind of thing. Uh, I I'm kind of iffy on it now because I had theories that ended up totally not coming true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna like directly link it to people, but I I mean yeah, I just did that. That was a lot of fun. That was a crazy lot of work and research what did you think of the movie overall i liked it i had a lot of fun um gun is an extremely talented person when he when he's given the chance to do what he wants to do and i feel like dc really gave him the chance to do what he wants to do 
I mean, I mean, Marvel did the same with, uh, especially Guardians. I feel like Guardians was all him, and Marvel was just like, hey, this is what we want it to be. It has to fit in the MCU, that kind of stuff. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and I feel like Suicide Squad was that times two. Like he was just like with the, with the amount of D list characters that he used in that <laughs> movie to an extent that made them honestly interesting is an incredible feat. And he's a I always think that Gunn is a talented writer, and he's definitely one of those genre writers that never loses sight of what brought him there. So there's a lot of which I was surprised about horror elements in. Suicide Squad that I'm just like, oh, well, this dude did work for Trauma for, like, a decade. And he did do stuff like Slither. And he did do a bunch of different horror projects. And you could tell that that background is in his new... Like, in Suicide Squad. So that was really cool. Plus, mm-hmm. I liked that it came out on HBO Max. I was able to just, like, lay in bed with a thing of popcorn and just, like, watch it on my TV. Like, I miss going to movie theaters. And, like, I've done it, like, a few times since, like, whenever they've open back up quote unquote whatever but um movie theater popcorn has not been the same like it does not taste as good yeah um, at, at least the area I, i've been back to like I, like for the longest time during this whole pandemic i mean i've been like fuck going to going to movie theaters has been like the cornerstone of like what i do like on a weekly basis for like basically my entire life and not being able to go there not having the popcorn it fucking bummed me out and then i go back I, i'm trying to remember what the first movie i saw was was it quiet place 2 or I don't remember, and but you're only showing that and Black Widow at a lot of theaters for a while. Yeah, but but yeah, I I, w- I went back and just, yeah, the movie theater popcorn's not as good as it used to be. It's kind of it tastes kind of more on the kettley side than butter, even though I request like extra but I I don't know I don't know what's going on. It's I hate, hate to go off on a tangent, but I can agree with that statement. I'm not gonna out myself in where I work, but I work below a movie theater, and. I went up during one of my lunch breaks. Instead of getting an actual lunch, I got like a large thing of pop uh, of a pop uh, popcorn. So I hadn't had movie theater popcorn in like ages, and it just didn't taste good. <laughs> I don't know, like, it got like a shit batch, but I was like legitimately disappointed. Like I was like, I was like, I haven't had movie theater popcorn in like a year, and I finally get it, and it tastes awful. And I will say, I do have my first m- m- um, movie tickets. In like a di- in like a year, because I'm seeing Shane Sh- Shane Chi Thursday night. Um, because I kind of figured fucking Marvel's not going to show this shit on Disney Plus anymore. So I guess all I have to do is actually go like and actually see a movie. Um, so I will be going back. And I mean, I don't know, I'll judge the popcorn then, but at the time when I got it, it wasn't good. <laughs> It took me a really long time to to come to terms with it because like the first time I had him, just like oh maybe it's just happens to be a bad batch, and like the second time, the third time, I'm just like okay no there, there's an issue, and I don't want to admit that there's an issue, but yeah it's it's fucked up. Uh, talking about uh, <laughs> Suicide Squad, uh, I'll, I'll basically echo everything you've said. Uh, James Gunn has a sick twisted sense of humor that absolutely clicks with me. Like the. Me like you, you, you can watch the movie without knowing it's James Gunn and just be like, "This is a James Gunn ass movie." Um, without spoilers, um, hmm, how do I want to say this? The the prominent character in and basically these DC movies now. Um, I'll I'll just say it, Harley Quinn, fucking great. Love love. Uh, uh, how do you, how do you say her first name? Margot Margot yeah. Margot Mar- Robbie. Mar- yeah, she's amazing. Love everything that she did in the film. Um, she's not necessarily the main A plot. And so in a weird way, it I, I don't want to say tacked on because it's great. Every, everything she does is great. They make her but, the B plot. Yeah. And I mean, that could just be because Gunn has a habit of doing B plots in his films, but he does them very good. Like even with all the Harley stuff. And they recreated one of my favorite scenes from the comic that I was very happy <laughs> about. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll tell it to you after. Um, he he always has this thing of doing B-plots in his movies. I'm pretty sure, sure Slither had one. I think it revolved um, Michael Rooker's char- character. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've seen that. Um, but Gunn has this way of doing B-plots in a way where it doesn't take away from the main story. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely say that Gunn did did some things in this that made me multiple times out loud just go like, ah, (laughs) like, (laughs) 
multiple times audibly. I was like, come on. I mean, I'm cool with that. It's great. Wasn't expecting it, but ah. Uh. <laughs> like, man, I, I, I just I just had such a fucking good time with it. And um, we, we don't have to put it on blast, whatever. There's There's been, as usual, the Marvel discourse. I'm just like, you and me. We we went to film school. We we watched a lot of like we, we studied everything. We watched a lot of pretentious films. And I'm just like, hey, I'm I just like Marvel movies, okay? It's just like I, I like I, I don't even want to call them dumb. I I don't think they're dumb. I I, I, I yeah. like action movies. I like cheesy B horror movies. I, I, I there's there's, a, there's like this whole veneer of like fucking like what is like actual cinema versus these popcorn I like I don't give a fuck, dude. It I like it. I it's yeah. I will argue this shit till the end of the time that uh, Captain America Winter Soldier is one of the best spy films of the last decade. Oh, absolutely, fucking Hell yeah, a dude. fucking Marvel movie? Like, it's... And I don't want to get on this discourse, because I shouldn't have gotten it. I shouldn't have gotten on it on the first place, but I had to, because how... I'm, I'm not even going to get, get get into it, but calling... And just calling children who enjoy the MCU pernicious and dangerous is just fucking absurd. Like, they're literal children. If they're not hurting anybody, let them enjoy what they want to enjoy. I got into comics as a teenager because of the MCU, and I'm 25, and I still fucking love the MCU. Like, three-fourths of my time in California in, in, in Adventure to my dad's an annoyance was spent in Avengers Campus. Mm -hmm. Like, meeting all the Avengers. And I'm 25, but I still enjoyed that <laughs> shit. Like, I, I it's... It's just it's it's dumb. It's crazy. It's a stupid ass dis discourse. Any film is a film. If your movie is being shown in a theater and it's shot like it's like if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. If if it's shot in on on a camera and it's shown in a theater, or it's a or you call it a oh excuse me, if you call it a film, it's a film. Like you don't understand why people why this discourse still like still exists. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, um, just just even thinking about it. Just like, oh god, I like some people really make their whole fucking personality just like, oh, I just like fundamentally oppose like superhero movies. I'm like, I don't know, dude. You, you're like, you're you're missing out on some good shit. Like, I I think there's certain Marvel movies that are more um, run of the mill than others, for for, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. But th there's some fucking gold in there, and you're like, you you are missing out like so bad if you're not watching shit. It's uh, and that's as yeah. much discourse as we're gonna talk about on this show today. Hey, <laughs> like I am done with the discourse. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Let people enjoy. There's, Let people enjoy shit. Like there, God, there has been a lot of discourse at the last. <laughs> Too many. The, con con conveniently, in the time that we have been off the air, there's been a lot of and discourse. And I'm exhausted by it. I mean, like, I like fighting the good fight when it comes to speaking out against like bigotry or, or like shitheads whatever and like i don't like e even if it's stuff i fundamentally agree with there's times i'm just like i just don't care in the aspect i do not want to see it i don't want to engage with it i already get shit in my daily life like sometimes i just want to chill i want to vibe it's it's exhausting it is absolutely fucking exhausting it's uh yeah that's all I'll say about the dis about discourse in general. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk. Finally, talk about games. Yes, yeah, so let, let, let's talk about games. The things that a uh, a video games podcast is typically known for um, that and talking about James Gunn. I'll, I'll use any excuse to talk about James. Uh, Gunn, I mean, kind of excuse. He did confirm this this week that that a specific scene in Suicide Squad was based off his work on Lollipop Chainsaw, which kind of rolled. And he and he actually name dropped the 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 like game too. He was like, "Oh yeah, I worked on this game a couple of years ago," and I totally based this one fight scene off of that game. You know, I think I own it on PS3. I just never actually got around to playing it. It's nope. if you can get past a lot of the problematic shit in it, it's dumbly fun. Like it's totally a gun project as much as it is a pseudo fifty one project. And I had a lot of fun with it, and it was very cute because uh, Suda 
added Gun on Twitter being like, oh my god, thank you, and Gun totally responded back to it, and I thought that was the best thing. And he also thanked uh, Gail Simone in the movie's credits, and she's one of the best Suicide Squad writers like out there. And that was nice. just really cool. The one thing I will say about Gun is that he at least gives credit where credit is due. And that was very cool to see him be like, well, of course I was going to thank you in the credits of this. Like, just like, <laughs> of course I was going to do it. Like, it just it just felt really good to know that Gunn is definitely one of those directors that knows who, where he gets his stuff from and very graciously thanks those who helped make it so. Nice. That, that was uh, We have some... Some some uh fucking CJ. We have CJ in the chat saying, Jose, have you ever played this hit indie game called Halo? Is it uh, is it the guy who was in Fortnite who's very graciously getting his own his own game? Yeah, it, it's weird. Uh I, I, I there's like some person called Master Chief, but he plays this guy called Halo and there's Isn't like Master Chef. Yeah, he he cooks. Uh he cooks the enemies. It's like cooking mama except with uh aliens. Um, Isn't that just trauma center? And Kenny says, "Don't you know he hates Halo?" Spe- I do not hate. I, 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 I can't. I can't pull up a facade. Halo Five is fucking good. His name is Mister Halo. <laughs> um, 